I'm from California, and um, one of the things that happened for this project, I mean, I had worked in Louisiana before. I had been traveling in my Volkswagen camper for many years, wandering different areas, going cross country, photographing, that kind of thing. So um, I had been to the South before, but what was really interesting when I did this project in 1998, the concept from the museum was picturing the South. And that really was the only framework. There was no, there was no limitations, there was no restrictions, there was no guidance. It was just like, you know, come in fresh, do a, something that relates to picturing the South. And it was kind of exciting. We have this big idea of what the South is. And I went, you know, I'm gonna just kind of go in open-minded. And what I decided to do is I flew to New York, I rented a car, and basically I flew to the North, I rented a car and decided to drive towards the South and see if I could figure out where the South actually begins. Generally what I would do on a trip is I'd go for two or three weeks. I had an eight by 10 camera, view camera. I had big film holders. I would put them in the back of my car and you know, basically at night I would stay in a motel. And I just wandered through the South and I ended up, an old friend of mine from San Francisco had been given a position um, at an art institution in New Orleans. Um, and he and I were in contact and I told him what I was doing and he said, you know, you need to drive up and down the Mississippi River Corridor. It's a place called Cancer Alley and it's kind of a remarkable phenom of a place. So during my travels and wanderings and just like getting lost here and there, I ended up going up and down the corridor between um, Baton Rouge and, and New Orleans. And I was just stunned. What I discovered there were about 100 behemoth belching industrial plants, um, generally petrochemical plants, just spewing terrible smog and, and odors and just terrible stuff all along. And that's how that project began. That was uh, 1998. The first thing I did is I started wandering up and down the corridor. And that would simply mean getting in my car and driving on both sides of the river. You know, sometimes I'd go up one side and then come down the other, spend days, weeks going and just seeing what I discovered. And it, it visually, it was incredibly compelling. One of the things that was kind of stunning about this petrochemical corridor is that alongside these big industrial belching factories were these gorgeously restored plantations. The tourist industry was huge where people would come and pay and see people dressed in old gowns and and uh, be able to see what a real plantation looked like, what the slave cabins looked like. It felt like a dysfunctional Disneyland. It was like beautiful and wonderful and magical and kind of bizarre and a little horrific. But I also started going to political meetings, public meetings about, you know, the, the issues there, about the, the um, petrochemical industry issues. There were a lot of activists working. I met um, a great activist who was kind of bringing this, the issues to, to general attention and he introduced me to people. I would go to public meetings. I found even here, I found old journal notes um, about different meetings I'd go to and people's responses. So I would take notes back at the time, keep a journal entry of it all. And uh, so I researched it. I, you know, and I interviewed people on all both sides of the issues. I in interviewed people from the petrochemical industry trying to, you know, rationalize or, or justify what they do because it creates jobs and it, the country needs it and that kind of thing. And then, then the people that were living it, there's, there's these poor communities that live right up against these industries and they get the worst brunt. The cancer rates are high, which is, of course, why it's called Cancer Alley. My main form of discovery is with the camera, with wandering, with looking, but I would try to research and learn as much as I could about what I was seeing. In 1998, I did the first round of photographs, and then in 2010, for whatever reason, I got the idea, you know what, I'm gonna go back and see what, kind of do a follow-up, a, a re-photographic survey. Have things gotten better? Have they gotten worse? Or they stay the same? So I went back there and I photographed some more um, now, I was no longer shooting with an 8x10 view camera. I was shooting with a you know, high-quality digital camera. Things had not gotten better in, in 2010. They were still pretty much the same. There were a lot of um, social justice movement, environmental justice movements going on um, by local people. But uh, it, it's, the challenges remain. And 
you know, in the meantime, global warming is getting worse. And uh, this, this is an issue that's really pressing. It's just not going to go away. We've got to deal with it.